All right, so jumping in and getting started, we have this little black window talking about my hotkeys, so I don't have to. So I'm just gonna press A and delete that. Shift A, add a cylinder, RX90, SY, you know, old habits always die hard. And we're just scaling it out, and then we're just gonna apply the scale and hit it with a level of sharpen. And I always start out every video with my viewport shading being default now, so that way I can say, press Alt V and click on EVHQ. Otherwise, people will just ask me, why does my viewport look crazy? And so we're just going to start off cutting an end gun, and we see that we need a little more room, but that's fine. We'll tap into edit mode, and we'll grab this back face, bring it out, and let's just shift click sharpen. And from here, I'm just going to Q, ever scroll, and we're just modeling this without any sort of like consideration of what it's going to cause to us later as far as pain is concerned. We're just having some fun and creating something that I had a little fun solving earlier. So with this shape, I'm going to pause it and bring it in. And as far as wireframe goes, if you press H, you can bring your shape back to being in solid display. But I like having it in wire because, you know, I just need to see what's going on with the geometry most of the time. And let's just press space bar and let's set ourselves up with one more of these areas to solve. That area would be a pain. Making it short would also make it a pain. If we solved it here, we could just call it a day, but by placing it shorter, we have to solve this and everything around it and keep it congruent. So that's kind of the point of this particular shape that we're constructing. I'm gonna press Alt X and then press X, and we're just gonna mirror this on a modifier. So that way this is kind of our finalist result. So Let's see how short this tutorial can be today. I'm just going to go under operations and shift click smart apply to make a clone. And let's go under quad remesher and let's make sure everything's nicely sharply marked and remesh it. And if the mesh looks the same, that means uh, I could pretty much thank you guys for coming out and watching me today and we can wrap up this video. However, I will argue to the bitter end that these solutions are just perfect for sculpting, but imperfect for subdivision, which why even go all quad if you can't convert it to subdivision perfectly, but really what kind of smack am I talking? This thing looks perfectly fine. Maybe a little ragged in some places. I could probably play with the settings and really get it looking fine, but you know, who am I to knock this thing? I'm just a human. So, you know, what do I know? Anyways, let's just, um, select this shape and shift click smart apply to duplicate it again we'll press shift h and get rid of the old one and let's just uh get this party started so you know me Windows zero one perimeter protection 24 hours a day i got your back protecting the perimeter first and foremost we gotta lock down the perimeter and that way we can really quarantine what damage we could bring about because any changes that we start doing to this as far as moving things around is going to change the roundness of this cylinder. So that's the fun of the study is being able to keep the form while also getting somewhat intricate with the topology, but not too intricate because then it starts to work against us. But and I'm just testing flows. You know, whenever I get one vert, I might as well just move my mouse a little bit and grab the next train as far as flows are concerned. Let's just control shift tab, jump to vertice, you know me. I'll try to make things line up, at least to start. And then we'll just get more chaotic as things uh, come together. So really we can't work the outside too much, like complete it because the inside is going to give us so much additional work to have to deal with. I always flatten things with S axis and the key I should talk more about our own system for that but you know blender habits die hard so how are we going to solve this well i'm going to make a mistake you know anything that contributes to the form of the cylinder is going to be a mistake in my eyes so you know we probably shouldn't have done this because we're going to have to reinforce these as well so one of these loops is going to be redundant but we can't Confirm this until the very end, but you know anytime you add form to the uh, external shape is Just going to hurt subdivision So getting in here. Let's just select these edges and maybe not that edge. Maybe not that edge either In fact, if we even bevel this edge, let's just solely our bevel 
you know me, the Solier of bevels now. I just get in and let my bevel profile setting, let my bevel settings get messed up by pressing Control B and then rolling it once and pressing P and move my mouse over until the profile at the bottom says one. And now every time I bevel, I'm doing this kind of uh, profile bevel. So we see that this area isn't going to bevel right. And this is also why I wanted to do a video about it because I was like, you yeah, know, this would be a good lesson for these guys. But we're going to need to guide the bevel. So by now having the edge, we can now give this area some guidance. And let's slide this area out because this is kind of the direction our flow is going to be going. And let's grab this one and control B and really think about this. How do we want to do this? We could grab all of this stuff and try pressing control B and maybe it'll be that easy. And really it's not because bevels are going to need guidance. So we're going to guide this one here. And we're going to guide this one here using some disposable geometry. And this should actually improve our outcome that we're looking at. However, we look at these bottom faces that also have no guidance and it's probably going to haunt us, but good old Howard. Bevel gets better and better and survives more cases than I ever give it credit for. But the tool is so great. I mean, of course, there's always room for improvement, but that's the case with everything. I do love bevel though. Form some connections, replace some connections, and now this area is going to hold together pretty well when it comes to subdivision. Let's also do the same thing here. Press E and make a connection, which means that we can jettison these pieces. And with this one, I'm going to try something different. Control Shift B, roll the wheel once. Let's merge these two. Let's dissolve that and wait almost had it wait no i didn't all right fine we'll play by these rules and this is a flat area anyway so that's why i'm getting so much versatility with the geometry that i'm sliding around ordinarily i wouldn't be playing such a dangerous game but it's all flat here so who cares but I was worried about adding this loop prematurely because this is going to like set the tone for us like working our way along this all the way to the other side, which we'll have to reduce at some point. So let's look at what we have here and let's just make this connection and let's add an additional extra here, dissolving this and we could dissolve that, which, you know, every now and then you can dissolve an area that you think would normally collapse, but it'll hold together. That was one of those rare times where it did. And so this area is gonna need reinforcement ASAP. So let's go ahead and space that out. For this area, we just wanna begin relaxing the flow a little bit, even though we got a triangle, you know, doesn't matter, we can deal with this geometry whenever we want. It's just us riding flows on planar surfaces. So in a way it's really easy, but the constraint is the greater cylinder that, you know, is our world. If we do break that, then we lose the game of topology. So selecting these two, we'll form a connection. Let's just control R, throw a point there, form a connection. You know, I thought I actually edited my prefs to be a little bit more chill on the settings. Let's go under themes, under 3D view for face selected. Let's change that to blue dot with D dot with die and lower to alpha substantially. And let's save that as our preferences. And now whenever everything's selected, it'll have this look. You know, you can always just get in and change the theme. I always play off of the default. So, you know, people ask me for my theme and I'm, I don't have to provide a file because it's based off the defaults. Just get in there and set it up. Also, I have videos where I set up Blender, where I set up the exact same theme. And really, it's no big deal. Just get in there and get familiar with your themes. So here we are just sliding this around.
And for this area, let's just select both these edges and subdivide to add an edge here. And we'll just bring this edge over and pretend it's been here this whole time. And we can reinforce that. So as far as us getting this all the way to a happy solution, we're going to need quite a few edges, but I am willing to give it this many edges. One, two, maybe that many. That's how many edges I'm willing to give this area. So we have to solve it on the way there. We could also add some loops along this planer. Solve, solve, solve. We'll be needing an edge later. So let's just give this one and we'll turn it into two, which can solve this and this, reducing the need for us to have to create a topological redirect later. I mean, really we could be a little bit nicer. You know, we don't have to be so um, frugal with our loops in actuality. We could just give it the geometry it needs. Sometimes it warrants it, but you know, I just um, have flashbacks of doing this earlier and I always like to try to change up my solutions every time. So let's right click S Y. One of these will flatten it S Y zero. One of my favorite keys. And we can align those two with vertex snap and select this point, this point J to connect. And so far so good. We're making good time about 11 minutes. So, Trying to uh, crunch the time down on these because usually I run through this stuff like nobody's business. I want you guys to get the wrong impression that you know it takes me all day to correct a piece of geometry. Especially when we talk about the next part about setting up this geometry. Oh God. So here I am making a terrible mistake. We're talking about not adding any more spans. So how are we going to deal with this? Well, I am going to turn this into a triangle and we actually need two so let's turn it back into a quad because it's on a flatty and that will do so getting more complex but we're working our army of geometry across the side and we're not even testing how it's going to hold together with subdivision but really as long as we just maintain our perimeters and keep things rather efficient as we get to the edges and provide adequate amounts of protection with our perimeters that are so important, represented by our sharp edges, then we should be able to get to the destination without any problems. So let's select both of these. I'm just going to press control B and it just works right out for us. So now we've offset any topological concerns over to this other area that we'll begin dealing with. But before that, let's um, bring our boys home from Afghanistan. And I'll add a loop here, select these two points, connection has been made. Another connection has been made. Let's turn this into two because we're going to need them for these two. And I don't even need polygon display because in actuality, I don't care if it's all quads. Um, I just care if it's quads where it matters. You know, I, I've never ever said, hey, use ingons on curvature. Um, I mean, if you can get away with it, you know, do whatever you can get away with it um, to get the job done. But um, topologically, I've always had a view that you should basically correct anything that's dealing with curvature because otherwise you're at the mercy of whatever Blender solves with. And, you know, it's not pretty, but at least Blender has a solution. There used to be a time when Blender used to only work in triangles and quads. And when he added N-Gons, I used to be like anti n -gon, right? Like I would um, tell people like, I'm never gonna switch over to N-Gons. Yeah, in retrospect, that's absolutely silly and anything that blender adds you should immediately adopt and jump onto because it's going to be the future but you know after a while i realized ingons were like this temporary hold the phone geometry and you know i'm not the biggest guy about answering phone calls so 
hold my phone call like forever is ingons. Ingons are the most amazing addition to geometry since the triangle. And triangles are crazy too because they're just these loop terminators. So anytime that you're working, you're like, you know what, I need this flow to end. Triangles is there for you. And if you need the loop to begin, you add another loop to that triangle and it becomes a quad. So when you think about geometry like that, that's really the gist of like all those 3D memes in the past is you connect it like this and it does this and you connect it again and it becomes a redirect and then you can do this to mitigate your poles. And as long as you keep your poles in areas that aren't the worst places on earth, you'll probably survive. So I want this loop to go, but I don't want this loop to go like that. That's too close together for my taste. So let's cut this loop in its prime by just doing that. And we'll bring this piece in, slide it out, bring this over. And we got to think about what we want to do with this because it is kind of approaching that point. You know what? I'm going to actually give it to it and we'll slide over like so. But it's going to ask for a third loop, and that I just can't allow. Oh god, we can't slide this one, so we need to leave that there. This area will be what I refer to as a compromised area because of topological limits, but that is fine. Our war must go on, and plus, there's always refinement at the end that can be done. Sometimes I look at the stuff I did on these videos with you guys, and I just get back to solving it. Um, just to give it another shot. I'm like, yeah, I think I'm, I think I'm better than that. It's got stage fright. How to leave this in gone present. But, you know, the goal is to um, help you guys get more confidence whenever it comes to dealing with these sort of situations because no doubt they arise. But it's how you deal with them that, you know, makes you. And for me, I, I, I run straight at them. I look at these issues and I'm like, I wonder what the solution is. So with our solely bevel, which is what I'm referring to this as. Oh man, this is going to ask for another loop. And on the other side, we're going to have to do the same in order to meet this. Just because I want to reinforce that area. So hard decisions are being made all over the place as we work our way across this geometry. This area will bevel poorly. So let's um, let's give it guidance. A little guidance never never go wrong with these things. And let's just begin beveling. And we now have set up our entry point for our assassins to enter. However, we have a lot of warriors at the gate. <clears throat> so. Let's do a little bit more solving over here, and then we'll go back and check on our uh, incoming army. In the end, this area got exactly what it wanted. This loop might help us with maintaining the curvature, but I am prepared to do some optimizations in the end. You know, we could always use like um, what I call hacks, which is like using subdivision and shrink wrapping it and stuff like that. And I I'm not against it, but they are my least favorite. Receiving a phone call. Uh, ignore. Like I said, hold the phone. Jeez, people. I have all these eye devices, and so when I receive a phone call, it literally destroys me. Like, it's crazy. It's like um, all the machines have turned against me, is what it sounds like, because every freaking device will ring. You know, there's days where I just don't even wear my Apple Watch anymore because it gives me anxiety. I call it the anxiety watch because all it does is give me anxiety. I'm like, is a watch supposed to give people such anxiety? It's just the anxiety watch, you guys. I mean, I still recommend it 9 out of 10. Great features. It keeps me notified on everything. That's why I respond so fast. Let's give this what it wants, which is three loops. Kind of a high ransom, but... We're working our way through this and I just know the result is going to justify the means and even though these loops are getting wonky It's not doing it on the perimeter, but I would like to have it one loop away from the perimeter, but Sometimes I get a little obsessive whenever it comes to loops and their placement 
So how are we going to solve this, guys? How are we going to solve this? No I'm kidding. We are going to give it guidance. Not that guidance. <laughs> the guidance of hiding it. That's also some guidance, but the guidance we want to give it is something like that. So this perfectly sets us up with a hold the phone situation when it comes to redirecting geometry. So, you know, sometimes I wish I could write the Blender docs on certain things. Like I want to write the ones on constraints because constraints are so awesome, but no one likes them like I do. I don't know. I have a special love for constraints, which I'll be returning to after this. In case you're wondering why I'm doing all these top of study videos, it's so that I can have 30 of them in a playlist and then update the documentation page to talk about topology and um, Booleans and dealing with it, stuff like that. And I feel like having 30 um, videos on the topic would make it a lot easier to digest that this is a thing that has to be done. However, uh, right now I'm using vanilla tools because I'd, I'd like appealing to the um, vanilla crowd as well. Can't forget your roots, but there is a better way. And there's so many better ways, you know, that's why I'm always talking about quad remesh because if you can't see the difference between what we're doing and what that tool is doing, then you should probably use quad remesh because <laughs> I was just talking with someone about it yesterday. I was like, you know, if a client just didn't know, you probably could send it to them. But I hope I'm not that client, because I would be like, uh, are you a machine? <laughs> Let's talk about some of your loop placements. You can tell a lot about a man by the way that they place their loops. So, you know, revealing your topology is almost like revealing your handwriting. Don't do it. Just kidding. But maybe a little bit. I, there's a lot you can tell about someone by topology. Like, I can look at people's topology and think you know they're struggling right here or man it kind of really barely made it out alive or is that some cad topo or there's so many things you can tell about a person about their topology but also boolean topology has its own rules but you don't hear anyone talking about them you know if i was um a terrible person i would be getting on to people on their post being like your boolean topo is terrible where's your guidance edges you're crucifying the bevel you know but people would think i was really a weirdo beyond current weirdness but just having some fun here so Really you gotta think about that, but you know, all these areas I'm telling you that I'm pointing out are gonna come back to haunt us because we must respect the cylinder. That was like the first rule. First rule that I started breaking because we also gotta reinforce these edges of importance. Like all of this, Bevel let us go, which actually offset our problem a little bit over, which means that we can solve this like so really going in on this cylinder, but will the result be worth it? You know, we probably bully in this thing for like 10 seconds, 10 seconds. And we've been at it for 23 minutes now. And for some reason that one worked, but the previous one didn't kind of weird, but I don't ask you any questions. J to make a connection, dissolve, dissolve. <laughs> like, I wish I could just speak to Blender. I would just <laughs> be screaming these commands like a um, Yu-Gi-Oh game. All right, so this area can be a little bit tighter. You know, and I'm not just saying that because I need two loops, all right? However, I do need those two loops, so. But also, I know that I'm going to need to protect the perimeter. So let's go ahead and start doing that very early. You know, we we're talking about our incoming army, and we never got back to addressing it. But I guess it went ahead and started burning its way through the village. And we're pretty much at the end of this adventure. So that means I can select this stuff and perform a join. So we got ourselves a uh, 
problemo, as um, Terminator would say. How are we gonna solve this? Well, first of all, let's focus on the goal. The goal is that, I mean, I just did a really bad knife maneuver. I'm surprised I didn't make a double, but we at least accomplished our goal, that goal. Let's also offset this because I really, really want this to work out. And another phone call. Why am I receiving this phone call over and over? I should probably pause and answer it. But I guarantee you it's um, not even going to be worth me stopping this recording to do. Because we are so close to the goal. Let's unmark all sharps. And we've already offset that area. Let's... Um, Offset this too. I forgot to change my face color. So for a minute I was like, wait, what am I looking at? That's why you should stick close to the defaults. And face face. This I and B in order to keep our boundary. If you don't press B, you'll get something like that. So if you press B, you get something real nice. And I think our war is over. You know, the war of us versus this geometry. I was like looking at gun parts and I saw a part that looked just like this. So I'm not even going to name this gun part. I'm just going to name this part. But here's the moment of truth, guys. Control three. You know, maybe control four. Let's look at what we have. So there's a little bit of an edge showing here because we gave this mesh a mustache and I'm not too big a fan of that. Also, we could continue a all quad loop just by giving this one extra area. So let's experiment with this solution. Also, my subdivision is like so high. And showing in edit mode. <laughs> you know, I never show subdivision edit mode. Because I don't need edit mode lying to me. That's where I go for the truth, like that door in Full Metal Alchemist. So this area didn't even have like enough reinforcement going on in all honesty. So we're kind of um, correcting a mistake here, even though a little late game. But like I said, we, we'll be correcting this thing all throughout. Like we didn't even finish this war. We just left it. I was going to insert another Afghanistan joke, but I'll spare you guys. And let us add one more loop. And now we have a full flow. Why is this flow not full? This geometry almost made it home. Just got a little drunk, got detoured. Let's actually look at our topological result. First, we'll turn off subdivision. And let us go under polygon debug and we see that there's an end gone here. So we could easily correct that by, uh, I don't need that much geometry to solve that. Do I even need geometry going all the way across like that? No, I want to get a localized solution. So let us first turn off polygon debug. Let's save our file as well. Sponsor you, uh, saving this file sponsored by PowerSafe. Topo study part. And <clears throat> I like it when I save a file and it's like the first time I save that file. I'm like, yeah, it is. <clears throat> and I was about to slide this to meet, but I see that that would have been a regretful decision. So we got to really think about this. How do we want to solve this? Do we want to solve it like that? No, no. Actually, like I said, we don't want to have that right up against our parameter. We'd rather have it offset from two parameters. And we could always add a loop in order to simplify it. Or better yet, we could add a loop going that way. And that would actually simplify it a little more evenly. Let's slide this geometry out. And all we have is a redirect. But, you know, that's if we just really, really, really want quads. Like I said, I don't even care about quads uh, unless it's like deforming. Do, is that loop worth it? 
is that loop worth it? Like, really, at the very end, I mean, we could have wrapped this video and called it a day and I could have returned that phone call, but instead, I decided I want to party with you guys just a little bit longer. Just looking at this, let's just connect them. And that almost seemed like a good idea. First, we gotta get ghost vision out of our face, so. There are some questionable decisions here, but we just uncovered a conspiratorial plot where geometry was not fairly optimized for the solution that we needed. So we're going to have to Jack Bauer this. <laughs> There's a try holding our perimeter. Oh yeah, this was a tense situation I recall. We could add an additional loop and finish this, but that would mean that we have a try on a curvature area. So these sort of decisions can't be made so easily. So it's like, how do you want to solve this? Well, let's just try. Let's just try. You know, I just want to get rid of all the end guns at least. You know, I'm not, I have a level of standard. If I'm cleaning up your geometry, I'm going to at least bring your end gun, I mean, bring you, um, non end guns without applying you know like like even though applying will remove one level of sub d um that is basically a hack and you probably shouldn't do it in actual work that matters so this area is united and do we want to just give this a loop to basically end this because we have a chance to basically make that area right. And if we wanted, we could add an additional loop that could go through here to finish this area, but also there's an end gun here. So maybe we do need a little uh, polygon display sometimes to help us out. And there's just, the truth of the matter is we are going to need to redefine some things with this particular area in order to maintain continued peace. There's no way about it. So my secession is me giving it this area. That's as far as I'll be willing to go. Let's connect these. And now we have this try in this area. And tries aren't the worst they're just loop terminators to me so I'm just deciding where do I want to terminate this loop and is there a way we can just turn this into a try yes and that so getting a little over obsessive I'm telling you sometimes I look at the polygon display and I just think man I gotta clean all this up and really it's just so unnecessary because the goal is to just survive subdivision, to just get to subdivision and actually survive the operation and have nice looking edges. So we see that our over obsession costs us a little bit, which we can mitigate just slightly. However, that just pushes the lump that we're creating somewhere else. So really it is a question of, are some of these loops actually needed for this particular area? Or is there anything that we can do to actually relax them? Like for example, sliding them. But having triangles on the perimeter loop, is just not gonna be able to stand. In fact, I don't even know how this got in. Those sort of questions are best not asked, but we have a triangle on this perimeter and this perimeter, and that's just tacky. So let's see what it's like to remove them and keep it here. So, now we have something like that going, but that's going to result in a pole. So let's place it here, except that's going to place a pole on this perimeter. So let's turn these two into a quad, basically putting our pole here, not on any perimeter. And for this area, we're going to have to make a hard decision to basically get rid of that. Maybe both of them. We'll bring it up here, which basically interferes with our ability to maintain this particular loop. Let's actually have this take over the place of what we're replacing, even though this is some risky business. 
And so something like that, which we can bring both of these and turn it to a diamond quad, which will just redirect geometry both ways, giving us a slightly better result. I mean, every time I'm rotating the stuff, I'm just really giving it a good, hard, critical look just to make sure there aren't any uh, pulls happening on areas of perimeter importance. I mean, really, I, I feel like if I wrote an algorithm, I would be trying to make it so preferential towards perimeter protection that it would just be useless for everything else. Um, definitely be useless on the human face, but it would definitely protect the perimeters in a way you wouldn't believe. But anyways, now we are looking at our final result just kind of right here is an area that I feel is slightly contentious. Let's just relax it. Let's also look at this area. And I could use the space mouse for giving this thing an adventurous look. And for me, if I'm dealing with subdivision, all I care about is the tightness of my edges and how tight I can make them via topological solutions. Otherwise, it's not even worth it to deal with subdivision unless I'm turning a box into a sphere and then casting it or something like that. But really, I'm all about the topological finessing of services. We press Alt-V and we look at the wireframe. Let's also turn on optimal display and jump down to one layer just so we can look at what it would look like if it hypothetically were applied. So everywhere where the solution was lacking, we see that it results in some sort of circular loop happening on the surface. So also let's change to a different material. Maybe we can find something that actually shows the wireframe better. For example, this area I feel could have been solved better, more efficiently, and as a result, it got something like this, which is basically a double redirect. But we could have basically added a try here, which would be more compromisation to the surface of the cylinder that we fought so hard to protect. And really, at the end of the day, <laughs> I was about to quote George Bush, uh, you know, it's not too late, mission accomplished. but. We do want to um, select this loop and select the entire other side. And we could just slide that away and kind of relax this because this geometry is just way too close together. It doesn't, that geometry is suspicious. What's it doing? This job ain't that important. This job's, this perimeter's job is important. This area is a little less important. So let's relax it just a few slides and yeah, let's go back to Tor in our mesh. Also, this top area, very suspicious. Having this entire area be a no man's field is also suspicious, but we won't talk about that. This area also came out looking rather interesting. So if we tab into edit mode, we see that this is one where we simplified with a triangle, which ended up turning into a double redirect, which is the most optimal solution, but definitely has a flow to it, especially on a planar surface. Planar solves, you can be a little bit more relaxing whenever it comes to solving it topologically. However, the edge that protects this perimeter is slightly questionable. In fact, having a pole right on the perimeter protection edge I feel compromises the appearance a little bit. I'm still getting used to this mouse, sorry. But let's uh, go in and see how things are faring with that. So if we tab in, I can already tell you that there's a five star pole connected. So let's just add a loop and we see that this loop is going to require divine intervention. So I'm just gonna start with knife. And for the most part, we have survived that ordeal. So let us take this just a little bit closer to the edge and I'm about to break. I need a little room to breathe. And we'll also slide here. And let's see, we'll make the connection here. And we're gonna have to really be forcing some connections in here to um, make some sense of some surfaces, but that's fine. 
mission accomplished. However, we do leave a um, disconnected end gun just kind of um, flowing, but we can have it rotate all the way around that. So that is good. Let's select this all the way to this side and S X zero. And we see why our edge looks so um, not good. And that's because S X zero and we really want to protect the edge that we have going on just so it looks very good in subdivision you know trying to go for a result that a machine can't get yet hopefully not you know not trying to compete with the machines that I'm made truly redundant you know worst case scenario I would correct their topology for them you know allowing them to focus on other things when they take over so now we have kind of double perimeter protection happening here. And so let's now go back to our guided tour of the result. You know, if we wanted to do like a crazy tour, we could um, basically, let's duplicate this layout and let's have one view be that. And let's look at things through a camera Maybe not that camera, we're all up in that mesh. And let's look at through this camera. And on this view, we can just toggle everything displaying on the viewport off. Just kind of make it as quaint and quiet as possible. And for this one, we can activate under view, which can't read in these dang tabs. I'm actually using like a fourth of my monitor, you guys, so. Now, whenever we mouse around, you can actually look at the geometric result while I'm looking at this with buffed up subdivision vision to make me look slightly better by also smoothing my surface a little bit. So just taking a look at our result and all in all, I feel that things are now looking a lot better. You know, definitely want to protect the parameter. Can't let a video in with us failing to protect our parameters. So. We, we've been done probably like 15 minutes ago, but anyways, just having some fun with the model at this point. And so that is it. This mouse is quite fun. However, my stick feels a little stiff. There we go. I thought I was gonna have to hit it with some WD-40. Still might have to. So this area looks a little dense too. Let's tap into edit mode, take a look at that. And you know what? I over obsess. So let's jump back over to layout and let's also toggle off optimal display. So we can see what the actual geometry is for all the areas that we saw. So the main goal was protect the parameters in order to ensure that whenever subdivision was added, it didn't need our hard edges for launch. And then from there, just kind of keep everything reduced and try to keep some of our triangles and end gons away from critical loops so we don't sacrifice our integrity. So as long as they're kind of isolated in the middle of a big flat face, they're fine. This area, that was the whole point of us adding that edge, right? Was for us to get in and solve that. So now we can actually look at this mesh saying that, yeah, it received a happy ending. That sounds terrible. All right, so I'm going to wrap this video, and I'll see you guys next time.